Hello, everybody. Welcome to Breaking the Cycle to Step Forward, episode 18. I'm Beverly Ann, and today I'm joined by me, Chris Tuck, as always. Who else was you expecting? <laughs> well, just to make sure. Um, and as always, we're having a conversation which is authentic through a lived experience. It is our own opinion, so we love to hear what other people have got to say because with anything, we see different things according to how we've experienced it and where and how we see it. But we're also talking from a professional um, point of view as well. So the subject today is about change, but changing seasons and what seasons can mean to different people. Different people, yeah. And how something so innocent can be triggering as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because as we know, Beverly, don't we, like, if you've gone through any kind of trauma, especially through childhood, um, it just, it does impact your everyday life. No matter how much healing you've done or you think you've done, you can be triggered by anything at any time. So what might not be a trigger for me will be for you and vice versa. And some seasons I can struggle with and you don't and vice versa. And there's many victim and survivors out there that are the same. Yeah, and and there's also good seasons. So for instance, you know, we've always talked about this, being able to acknowledge how we feel means that we're able to either ramp up our self-care or find alternatives so that it's the best outcome for us. And it comes back to that word choices that we like to use. And sometimes when we talk about choices, I know some people say to me, but I haven't got a choice on how I feel. And no, they're quite right. When you have a trigger, you don't necessarily choose how your body's going to respond. But once we're able to acknowledge it, we're able then to say, OK, what is it I'm feeling? Feel it. What do I need right now to change it? Have that choice. Where the learning comes in, doesn't it? Like going through something like a trigger and then sort of like when you're back in your cognitive brain reflecting back on what happened how did it happen um and what do I do differently Mm -hmm. and there's the choice as you said quite rightly there's the choice in learning new information learning different techniques that can help you and then responding in a different way when you're not being triggered. So you have to do some work, unfortunately, on this to ground yourself, to stabilise yourself, whatever word resonates with you, so that you respond in a more beneficial way next time. Yes. And, and there will be a next time because it's just the like, the way that it, this happens, trauma and recovery happens. And it's like this summer where have um, been on honeymoon holiday and we were in a large hotel. I stay away from large hotels. I stay away from large swimming pools, mostly because I've got families. And I hadn't actually considered any of this, but went away, had a fabulous time, families all around. And it was only as I was coming away from the end of it that I suddenly looked back and it just went ding. But how much I've avoided being in family arenas, especially on holidays, because that was a trigger to me. And I what hadn't realised the trigger was being surrounded by families, you know, young yeah, children, why? middle children, um, because it was showing me, A, what I lacked, the mirror of what I didn't have growing up, but also um, when you're not with your own children and, and different circumstances happen or even your children grow up and don't need you anymore. Yeah. You know, and we get that in different ways. As we've said, parenting is a series of letting go. But sometimes, you know, as much as we encourage our children to go on and live their life, when they do, it's like, whoa. They don't need me anymore. (laughs) Who am I? (laughs) Yeah, who am I? (laughs) What's my role? I'm not defined by children anymore. And it wasn't until I was coming away from that holiday that it really made me see how much it's triggered me in the past and how much I've tried to be away from children in that that environment. Not that they were doing anything wrong. And I I think that's what's important about triggers. It doesn't have to necessarily be anything 
scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, that scenario that you just described, the large hotels, I don't like large hotels and I don't necessarily have the same reasons as you. Mine is having brought up children and not having young children around me anymore, when I am, their noise is deafening to me. Absolutely like, I'm like, I almost shudder. It's almost like um, I, I'm very sensitive to that to that noise, that loud noise. Yeah. And it's exhausting. You forget how exhausting it is, you know, because my brothers and sisters have got young children. Yeah. And when I have babysat, it literally takes me two days to recover from looking after them. And they're just normal, energetic children, you know. Um, Absolutely. So I avoid those big hotels and big pools and children for that reason, unfortunately. I think um, it's like as you grow older, you, you become less tolerant. Yes and no, because I absolutely hear you. And I'd be like, oh, no, I want to go over there with book. But actually what I enjoyed this holiday as well and reflecting on it was I was able to tap into my own child like my inner child and jump in the pool and throw a ball and you know sometimes yes. we get so wrapped up in what am I eating what am I doing that actually being able to let go yeah, and not think and about be. it and just yeah. be yeah yes yeah and yeah. why can't we do be childlike childish things and do childlike things just because we are in this grown-up body yeah so that's yeah. why I just wanted to share my thoughts about summer there yeah because yeah. let's move through the seasons then shall we okay so I don't know about you um we come to the end of summer I love summer I love the long days and the yeah. nights um, we're now changing and you can feel it changing. You can feel it and see it. Yeah. Oh, I never have my phone on. But that, I'm sorry about that. So, um, and you can feel, you know, it's that back to school, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's starting to come up, yes. Yeah. So back to school, that's already changed. It's a new beginning for a lot of children. Yeah. New school, new teacher. So I can even as I'm talking to you, I can feel that in me because it's a new environment. But for me also, it's where the clocks go back yes. and the days get shorter. Yeah, and darker. And that's for me when I had some of my biggest changes. Right. As a teenager. So, you know, one day coming home from school, going into a children's home, changing schools again, another environment, changing everything. So that's something that I'm very aware of. I know the dates. I mean, how do I know the date that I went into care and the next week, the week that I, you just do? However, the difference is instead of me counting down and thinking, oh, that's a day. Now I, I find other reasons to enjoy autumn. Right. So I love it when we sort out our wardrobe and we think of the clothes that we're going to wear. I love yeah. it when the trees are on the ground and we can do childlike things like walking through the leaves. The trees are on the ground, girl. Don't you Sorry. mean the leaves? <laughs> the leaves. The leaves of the tree. Yeah, the leaves of the trees. <laughs> and and you're walking through, you know, going for yeah. long, long walks. Yeah. So what about you with autumn? So for me, again, a bit like you, um, it's Christmas comes around so quickly, doesn't it? Once we start um, the September going back to school. And when I was happy as a child, I really loved looking forward to Christmas and, and what it, it would bring up. And as an adult, um, when my children were young, I got really excited for them. But as my own individual self, I was very sad coming towards that Christmas period um, because of like you did, holding the mirror up on the summer holiday, it's what you didn't have. And that sort of like gets reflected back at you, doesn't it? And um, and it is valid what you say about when you've gone through some kind of trauma around a, a particular calendar month or period within the year, like summer for you, Christmas for me, um, it's about acknowledging why, how you are, 
how do you physically and mentally cope with that and choosing with hindsight reflection and learning and knowledge to do things differently and I think that's taken a long time and I think some victim and survivors unfortunately just don't get there um, but we are trying to just encourage people aren't we to to look at it like we're describing and seeing how they can change things around to make it happier time whatever month or episode in the year season in the year make it more happier for them what is it you need absolutely because christmas yeah. the expectation yes <gasps> I think Christmas is one of those times where the expectation outside is huge. So yeah. for me, it's not necessarily about Christmas and um, the presents. For me, it's not being able to sit around the table with a family. Yeah. So it's recreating that table for me in whatever way is right. right. So I've, I've been to friends' houses. I remember one particular year, they converted their garage. It was just literally had sheets all draped out around. It was all dressed up for Christmas. And there were about 16 of us around the table, all in different chairs, but we didn't all know each other. But that, I loved that. It was being around the table. That's the bit I miss. Okay. And that's where I love it. If there's somebody, you know, I know that's going to be on there, come round. You know, it, and also it doesn't have to be a turkey. Can, I've had a curry Sorry, on I'm Christmas laughing Day. at that because it's like, doesn't have to be a turkey. <laughs> no, but again, it's the expectation yeah. of, you know, of traditions of yeah. other people. You know, you can have a Christmas dinner the day before, day after. And we also get so wrapped up in that. So when my own children, when I got divorced, my own children weren't, weren't going to be with me Christmas Day. And I remembered I was distraught it that hard. Yeah. it was very hard but then it was a friend it was like okay so what what would you like to gift yourself on Christmas morning yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> and then Come it was on, like get with it yeah and then it was like oh a bubble bath actually yeah you no know, getting up Christmas morning and having a bubble bath yeah and so what I did I moved Christmas so that the weekend before was my Christmas time with my children and our friends brilliant yeah doesn't have to be on the 25th of december does it no so yeah. that way it takes it away so there's another way yeah what about january chris how does january oh, before hit you? we get on to january hang on a minute because i'm in the fitness business i'm always literally three months ahead of course because i'm planning my timetables yeah. i'm planning my um you know my, my sessions etc cetera, etc cetera. um and i usually run it in four or six week blocks so i'm always a little bit ahead with all of that so i almost like the time we get to a certain day i'm almost feel like well I, what that was ages ago <laughs> and then it sort of arrived. um yeah so obviously september for me in the fitness business world and january are very busy months for fitness so when Christmas comes along and those two weeks in between Christmas and New Year, when everybody else is relaxing, guess who's working, ramping it all up, trying to like market. I've got all these classes, New Year, New Year. So that's me doing all of that work. So I never feel like I get a proper rest. Um, so again, I've had to ch change that over the years as well. And before we move on to January, I did just want to bring um, into here. Um, obviously, between September and Christmas, we've got Halloween. Yes. Um, which, as far as to my knowledge, is an American tradition that we've taken on, I believe. Well, it's, it's to, and I won't say I understand all of it. It's a pagan celebration as well. As well. Yeah. Okay. But we know, don't we, from working in our field and we yeah. know um, victim and survivors that were... Um, ritually abused and ritual abuse can sometimes be linked to satanic abuse and we're not going there because we're not experts in this we would just want to mention it um, um but not ritual abuse doesn't have to be satanic abuse but we just know that some victim and survivors are 
very triggered around September, October, November and Christmas, that whole winter season. And, and, and Easter, bank holidays. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm going to be, I don't want anyone to hear this thinking, oh, I didn't know about this and, and yeah. feel awful because we only know because of someone that's educated us. And oh, I yeah. remember when yeah. we were in Manchester and um, we, it was being shared and I was very honest and I said, I didn't actually realise this was going on today in yeah. the UK. Yes. Yeah. Not in a film yeah. or something. And yeah. it goes on in all villages, yeah. all towns, all cities across all different religions in different parts. And it's not always down to religion either. It will be a group of people. That's where it becomes ritual because yeah. they recite different rituals. Yeah. So just so want to again, make that clear. Yeah. And we're not experts in this area and we're not no. claiming to be, but we did want to just highlight that the victim and survivors of that abuse um, struggle immensely. Absolutely. Um, and so um, it is about, like all of victim and survivors, exactly how we've described, if you want to move on from some of the pain, is acknowledging what's gone on for you, how you feel, and what can you do differently to make life bearable, worth living. Um, I don't know what the right words are to use because I know that some people just can't do that. And I actually, since I've known that, I'm very aware of what I put out in a display. Because right. before I was ignorant and I say ignorance in the real term as that I didn't understand, I didn't yeah. know, I didn't have the knowledge. Whereas now, if I put a display out to let someone know, like young families, that they can knock on my door, yeah. I do it. So I'm representing autumn colours. Yeah. But I'll have a lot of orange, a lot of brightness in it. Yeah. So I'm acknowledging the season yeah. and the tradition. Yeah. But I'm also acknowledging I don't want to frighten anyone or trigger anyone. Yeah, yeah. But it is really difficult, as we said, because we can get triggered by anything, anytime, anywhere. Absolutely. Um, and as I said, what triggers me doesn't trigger you and vice mm. versa. So it is a matter of trying to live your own life with balance, trying to find those joyful moments and trying not to hold on to other people's lived experiences because otherwise you're never going to be able to live your own life either so we can be respectful of other people's lived experiences we can hear it we can listen but I think for our own health and well-being we also have to be able to get on and live our own lives to the best of our own ability and find those joyful moments. Even if someone else is finding it hard, just because I'm finding a month hard or a season hard or a particular date hard, I don't expect you, Beverly, to be miserable. That would be the last thing I would want for you. Yeah. Yeah. But that comes about um, what we always talk about, the importance of self-care. Yes. It's about making sure we're in the best place because, to be honest, I couldn't support you in any way if I wasn't in the right place myself yeah, or looking after yeah. me, you mm -hmm. know, likewise you, and I do love that analogy and I know we've spoken about it before, but when they talk about the oxygen mask, yeah, you know, I didn't understand that when I had children, when they said, put it on yourself first before you put it on children, I was like, no way. Yeah. That's selfish. <laughs> yeah. But actually it's not because once yeah. the oxygen mask's on and I'm breathing and I'm in a good place, I can help my children. I can help everybody in the plane. And that's the yeah. same way when you're supporting people. And that's where we talk about it coming back to choice. Yeah. Not and saying guess, it's easy. Just before we do move on to January, um, I just did want to mention that there is a charity called Reigns, R-E-I-N-S, that deals with support victim and survivors of ritual abuse so okay. I just wanted to put that out there okay and I'll put that in the comments section section as well for people okay so um because that's important that we have that support for everyone yeah so moving on to January then you go first 
January, wow, I have to say, we lose all the lights. The bit I love about December is all the, the lights, the glitz. The end of Strictly. <laughs> <laughs> you and your dancing. <laughs> yeah, but see, that, I love that. The glamour, the lights, the glitz. And then January can leave you feeling like, whoa, new chapter. I like New Year's Eve. Love New Year's Eve. And I know for Do some you? people, yeah, because it's at the end of a year, gives you a chance to look back and think, wow, look what happened in this last year. Look, look where I've come. Um, thinking, oh, what is it I want to bring in for the next year? But it's because the weather is so grey and I am very much affected by the grey weather. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people are, aren't they? It's just it's just so dark and miserable for most people um, that it's just like, you just want to hibernate. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, for me, um, January um, is not the month that I least like, that's February. Because January, both my children were born in January, oh. one on the 2nd and one on the 24th, I actually really look forward yes. to January um and it gets me through and also it's the start of the fitness new year business mm. so I'm really busy but come February that's when I start to feel a bit oh winter so long oh and by that time I've walked the dog twice a day and had to wash the dog shower her <laughs> twice a day because she's got muddy feet so yes no hate February for that reason <laughs> oh that's a strong word that is a strong um, word oh okay yeah but I <laughs> hate the showering and the mud can I say that can you not buy a, a Macintosh and and <laughs> little boots to go over her paws the time I got her in it and got her out of it the mud would be everywhere <laughs> what so about you February no actually and I'm very around Valentine's I think Valentine's isn't just about sending love to you know you have a, your valentine it's about sharing love and I, I, yeah. I do love um and sometimes I don't do it every year but I do it every so often and I will send um little valentines hearts etc to different people that maybe need a little bit of extra love maybe they're on their own or they've been through something just a little extra love because that's the bit I love about valentine it's that chance to celebrate and also sometimes we get a, an inkling of spring coming yeah yeah sometimes we can be lucky can't we and just see some of those flowers just coming up if, yeah. if it's been a bit mild yeah. yeah so for me again what you've done is fall outside the box and it's not just oh you've got to be with someone literally be with a partner yeah. um to to celebrate valentine's because valentine's is very commercialized so how can you flip it and change it from being very commercial if that's what you dislike to meaningful and you've already just flipped it by sharing what you've just shared and I think that's what we need to learn to do with all of those kind of or any of the dates that resonate with us either for a positive reason or for a negative reason we need to be able to just think outside the box and change things up for ourselves absolutely and that's where we we have choice yes so we're, we're still able to tap in think okay I don't know what else can I do because there's always going to be change because you know in March April you've got Easter you know for yeah. some people again that's good that's bad yeah. you've got May you're coming to end of school years you've got change th then you've so, got exams you've got stress ah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and so that's all important so what I like that we've been talking about this is I'm as you know, I'm um, studying again at the moment and somebody said, don't use triggering words. And I straight away, I thought, well, you can't say that. No. Because there's there's a misnomer that there are some words that are triggering and others aren't. That's not true. Yeah. As, no. we've, as we've discussed today on something harmless like seasons. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. But isn't it like, um, so just reflecting back on my own lived experiences, just quickly, I think probably Christmas Day 
has always been the hardest day. Not for me providing a nice time for my children, but before my children came along, I would go up to my mother-in-law's, father-in-law's house. They would bend over backwards to do a lovely dinner. They'd do all the shopping, all the cooking. They would get in my glass of champagne. So I only used to drink one glass a year back then. Oh, not anymore. Um, <laughs> and they used to buy me all these lovely presents. And it wasn't until the last couple of years that I realized what was happening for me. Um, I should have been really grateful and I should have been happy and I should have just been able to go, just accept what was going on. But subconsciously, I would always end up crying and I would end up in um, a state as in an anxious mess. And I used to end up angry and none of this was a reflection of them. It was all me. It was all me and what I was missing or what I had missed out on with my caregivers, my mum, my dad as a couple. And the abuse that we'd suffered with all of the caregivers in the different households. Um, so for me, it was, again, it's like holding that mirror up, isn't it? And like having this almost perfect Christmas to actually you should be able to um deal with it get on with it and enjoy it but you subconsciously you're it's all just being dragged down because of what you're experiencing subconsciously and it yes. wasn't until I was able to step back out of that in some of the counseling that I did at the time that I I used to sort of like say I just don't understand what's going on I really don't know what's understand understand what's going on with me and then someone pointed it out you're breathing and what you want to do you want all of that with your loved ones the people that you want around you so it's not that I didn't want them around me but you wanted your mum you wanted yes. your dad you know yes. and you haven't got that you've never had that so you've got to bereave that you've got to grieve it um and it's only when I did some work I, I'm not completely over it but it's like I've done a lot of work on it so now I can actually enjoy Christmas day I can actually enjoy that environment um and be thankful and grateful yes and and so first of all what I'm hearing is you've actually been able to find the words to express it too and as we yeah. spoke before that is so important, whether we verbalise it, whether we write it, whether we do it through art. or So finding the words to express it and acknowledge is a huge step, isn't it? It is because they thought and told me on several occasions that I was ungrateful, uh, an ungrateful person, not a nice person because of the way that I behaved. But it wasn't a behaviour that I wanted to to show consciously it was all subconscious and yeah. I didn't as you said didn't know how to express it and when I was able to express it and it wasn't Christmas it was in a summertime sometime I went back to my mother-in-law's and I sat her down and I explained what it was what was going on and she understood um and we sort of like made the peace yeah yeah which is huge and then as you said um then you're able to look at it in a different way yeah. and choose what's right for you. Yeah. And for, you know, for so many years, Christmas, that's how we spent Christmas. It was always at their house. And again, this is no disrespect to them, but it's just like you evolve and you learn. Yeah. I'm like, no, I want to spend it in my own home. Where's this expectation come from that it has to be that way? I want it this way. And it took, it felt like there was a tussle going on for a little while because I wanted to do things differently. Yeah. Yes. And eventually it was accepted. We, we, what we, what we did, I don't want to keep going on about my own stuff, but no, we it's come important. to sort of like, we come to a compromise where we did Christmas morning here and then we would go up there's, um, and then, you know, everybody's happy because I was happy when I was with them um, and then I could come away when I needed to because if I'm anywhere for long periods of time I feel trapped yes and then I start getting angry and anxious um, 
that's no one's fault. That's how I feel. So I'm now right. I'm going to be with you for this time. And then I'm going to leave. Yeah. All right. And it's all acceptable now. But you have to sort of like work through it. You yeah. have to sort of like when you've got relationships going on with different people it's, and there's these expectations, you, there has to be a time when you go, actually, this ain't working for me anymore. This is what I want it to look like. Let me have that. And then maybe next time or next year, whatever you're talking about, um, maybe we can compromise and come to some kind of arrangement where everybody's happy. Yeah. But it takes time and, and it, and, and it and can ruffle feathers and it can get yes. emotional. So that's me, Beverly. What about you? What is the most trickiest part of your year for you? I know we've touched on things, but yeah. I went really deep there. Yeah, <laughs> Have you, you did. Got something similar. Um, I think to be honest, I'm actually for the first time in a long time looking forward to Christmas this year. I've moved. I'm in a I'm in a really good environment. Recently married. Um, I'm I'm right near the sea. I know you're so lucky. So. To me, the sea isn't just about the summer. The sea is. Yeah. So for me to be able to go for a walk on Christmas Day on the beach. Now, that's not so I've never done that because even when I was an hour away, I'd sometimes do that or I would do voluntary work. I remember waking up and I over the years, I've woken up on quite a few Christmas mornings on my own. Right. And um, one of the times I'm I. Years and years ago, when it came to changing it, I remember coming up to Christmas thinking, do you know what, this Christmas I'm not going to wake up in the morning on my own. What I'm going to do is have purpose. Yes. And so what I did, I changed it, and I did volunteering. Yeah. And I remember that um, one of the years I volunteered in a dementia home. And you have to think about this beforehand. So if you're thinking that you'd like to do something like volunteering, you need to be thinking about that now because – you need to make sure your DBS is in place and um, they're always looking for volunteers. But it meant then that morning when I got up, I had a bath, happy Christmas to myself, said, sent the messages, but I had something I was going forward to. And to walk into that um, dementia home and sit with people that sometimes had family, sometimes they didn't, no judgment for whatever reason, but then to hear their stories because they were excited and sometimes you know because it's dementia they'd be talking about when they were younger etc yeah. and just being with them you know and and having lunch before going to a friend's and as I drove away and I was going up the hill it was an Ide hill it'd been raining and suddenly this big rainbow came out in the sky and, and I thought yeah that to me is what Christmas is about and it, it really made me happy and then I went on to my friends and I had a great meal so this year for me you know because I've been able to come through all that and you know talk about Christmas what I like this year I am looking forward to it does it mean having yeah. our first having our first Christmas as Mr and Mrs um creating our own space and I don't yeah. know how that look we need to all talk about that all have an input into it yeah and take it from there yeah yeah, and sounds good. I'll be having a glass of bubbly. I know that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> right. Well, Chris, we've run over run our 30 minutes. Uh, as always. <laughs> so your last thought for the day. Um, yeah, just do you. Whatever that looks like. And if you're not happy, change things up. Be happy. Do you. OK, so my thought, I'm going to. Refer back to New Year's Eve, because New Year's Eve can be quite tricky for people. Mm -hmm. So if someone's looking to change, and I don't do resolutions, because I think resolutions, they just get broken, and it's high expectations. Yeah. I just think, what do I want in for, bring, for next year? What do I want to bring in from next year? So if here's a thought for someone. If you have particular times in the year that you really find triggering, how about buying yourself a book? And writing down what you'd like to bring into your life next year, small things and large things. But what can you do on the days that you're not looking forward to doing something for you? And just write it down, free space. And yeah. then you don't have to keep thinking about it. Then you can open up, oh, yeah, 
and then you've got a starting point. Yeah, I think bearing that in mind for next year, that's what I'm going to do. Those dates in my calendar that aren't yeah. so great to plan something to do that I enjoy doing on those dates to change the narrative about that date, about yeah. that day, whatever that day and date is. I'm going to do that this year, yeah. next year. Yeah. And I'm going to continue. I mean, we'd actually like to go back to the hotel that we went to, but enjoy doing those childlike things. Yeah. And laughing and even playing darts. And I won in the end. Did you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did they all go in the dartboard? <laughs> they did. I won a certificate. How and how childlike is that? I was so proud to get that certificate. <laughs> You're laughing. But when me and Phil took the kids to Butlins a few years ago, we entered archery. And we both were quite... Com You've never done archery before in our lives. We were quite competitive. And we both come out with, I won the women's, he won the men's. And we got our certificates there. And we're like, ooh. See, so we can yeah. laugh about things and that's we what's can. important yeah but well it is time to say goodbye but um as we always say thank you to everyone that's listening and if you've got any questions or anything you'd like to share please contact us for anyone looking for support for um ritual abuse etc we'll put that in the comments for you and we look forward to recording next week's session we do indeed. Thank you for joining us, everybody, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for yeah. now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.